And we're back with some more oxygen not included. And today, unfortunately, we are not going to be strip mining any planets. Uh, we have some minor things we need to take care of that we've sort of been putting on the long finger. And maybe a couple of side projects that were requested. One was people wanted to see a design of this uh, niobium tamer that actually cooled the metal down to a reasonable temperature as opposed to just leaving it here at, you know, 300 to 900 degrees Celsius. Uh, I think we can manage that pretty handily. We'll just have to move the battery over a scooch. That should only take a second. This is a very simple, straightforward little setup, though it, it is kind of compressed down. We weren't planning on putting this in when we started. It was just a, it was a fair few requests in the comments to do a cooled version of the Niobium Tamer. Oh, and by the way, this Volcano Tamer should work on just about any liquid metal volcano. Um, I don't think you'd want to do it, though, outside of the Niobium one. It's just, it just seems like an awful lot of complication for it. Though I suppose if you want something you can just stamp down on any volcano, this would work quite well. Probably go with maybe three steam turbines for the aluminum ones, though. Uh, maybe no, you could probably get away with two. I'd have to test it, but uh, that doesn't matter for now. What we've got here is this uh, auto superhero is going to pick up the niobium, chuck it into this conveyor loader. Conveyor loader will send it out across the rail. It will go all the way through here. It'll hit this conveyor rail thermal sensor, which will detect if it's below 200 centigrade. If the niobium is below 200 degrees, it'll continue on through here and up through the steam turbine area before getting dropped off here. Reason for the steam turbine area, that is where this liquid goes to. And this liquid is cooling down the area, so it should help cool down the niobium as it passes through. We'll have to extend the cooling loop and do a few little modifications here to it. And, oh, and one thing that was also recommended that I haven't been doing, uh, we'll also put in a conduction panel. One of these things that allows cool things in a vacuum. This way we can cool down this auto sweeper without the need for that nap to blob. Not that it really matters, we've got the after there already, but we might as well use it because it's one of the new toys we've got. But first, let's extend this cooling loop on a bit. That should just about get us sorted. There's one last thing we need to do, though. Once this is, uh, yeah, I think that's fully pressurized, we can remove that. We need to put a liquid here. This is where we're going to be dropping off that liquid niob- or all the solidified niobium, and we'd like to make sure it's cooled down to a reasonable temperature. So, to put a liquid in there, I thought we'd use petroleum. Now, let's take shameless advantage of the new mechanics they've introduced. We're going to set this up to grab us some petroleum, because we want 200 kilos of it. Currently, it's stacked up here at, like, two tons of the stuff in the spot, or there was. I'm pretty sure someone just grabbed a, a blob of it. Then we'll wait until someone shows up with 200 kilos. Uh, ah, here we go right now. And then just as they get close, we'll tell them, nope, 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 we don't need it, we've changed our minds. Then we can move it to the location. Just a manual move of 200 kilos. We don't even have to fit in the bottle emptier. I was racking my brain trying to figure out where we were going to put in the bottle emptier. I was going to delete this, put it there. Like, no, no, no. We can just grab that and then we can empty the petroleum right there. Problem solved. Well, okay, once a duplicate decides that it's time to solve the problem. Boom. 200 kilos of petroleum, exactly where we wanted it. Minimal concerns. All right, temperature in here is still 200 degrees. Oh my God. It does take a while for that, uh, for the... Uh, the cooling to take effect. We're not going to be able to let anything out of here until it goes below 200 degrees, so let's turn this on anyway. Why not? We are going to go with rare resource, niobium. Now, auto super is going to pick it up from there, uh, dump it into that. Uh, yeah, what do we got? We have a whole bunch of stuff at 953. It took the hot stuff. Yeah, plan. And that goes out across the wire. And as it does, it rapidly plummets in temperature. Of course, that rapid plummeting in temperature is, you know, it dumping the heat into the steam, so... Yeah, you're still not getting through there. It's 400 degrees, but it's definitely plummeting, and once it goes below 200, we'll start moving it on. So let's give it a few cycles to catch back up again. Oh, there were comments made that this stuff is going to melt the ceramic. Uh, the ceramic melts at 1800 degrees. This niobium is, is 3200 degrees. However, I don't know how long that's going to take. At some point, we're going to come back with insulation and finish this off. Or maybe another suggestion was replace these tiles with diamond, and the diamond won't ever melt because the diamond is hot, is uh, resistant enough to temperature. However, that's just too much effort. Uh, though I suppose it is quite easy to break in there right now and replace it. I'd just be worried that niobium would solidify, and then we'd have to replace this side over here. Nope, 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 nope. We'll leave it for now. We are just about... Yep, actually, we are there. The conveyor rails have decided to let some pass. Now, let's check this stuff out. It's 195. Um, that should be passing through here and plummeting in temperature. It's down to 70, 40, 30. And you're dropped off in here. You're at a nice... What are you? 
10 in the low 30s. Well, 20-somethings. And if we check the temperature over here, the petroleum's at 32. It's not really affecting the petroleum because there's a lot of it there. Plus, it's the steam turbine behind it. Yeah, that is processing it at a reasonable speed and giving us a bunch of pre-cooled niobium. Uh, this is fairly straightforward. It's basically just a modification on the original design we did. And this is sort of the point of these whole designs. You can usually fit everything into these things. Oh, and we've replaced the... We got rid of the naphtha blob and we replaced this here with uh, one of those little cooling things. The conduction panels. I really have to get into the habit of using them more often. It's more convenient to design with these than it is with uh, using a blob of liquid. Like, putting a blob of liquid there was fine, but that's sort of limited where I was able to design it. I could have instead put it over here or, you know, there's... For example, we could have put it right there. Could have saved us a bunch of hassle. Uh, though, actually, no, that might not It's not a great example, but uh, the point stands. It, it allows us to do things in a different way. For now, we're going to leave this here processing. We'll be back to collect more of that niobium at some point. Uh, our rocket has left. Oh, and I made sure to wall in a bunch of area here. I didn't want any uh, nuclear radiation getting in there or nuclear waste. It's currently closing back up the doors, and you'll see we're on our way out of here. We are going to go explore this section of the map off that way, and then we're going to head back home. We have a few projects that need care taken care of. Just a few minor ones we've been putting on the long finger for far too long. Our current explorations have revealed one radioactive asteroid field, one sand... Oh, this is the meteor planet. Yeah, the one that has regolith. One source of regolith, and... Oh, yeah, there'll be uh, voles on there. Hmm. I mean, we could use more voles for storage, but no, not just yet. We probably should not go into orbit around that planet. I think the moment we go into orbit, that activates the planet. Uh, yeah, we still got to scan that, though, don't we? Damn it. Fine. We'll go into orbit around the planet. But it's not what we should be doing. Uh, yeah, we'll wait until we actually go forward at all. But we're going to need to be able to scan that as well, whatever it is. Ah, uh, destroyed satellite. Totally not worth it. Oh, well, let's hope some of these other things are better. At the same time, we've still got 12 tiles left. I think we can travel a few more tiles... Well, we continue to explore out here. Well, we're heading back home in a minute, but we'll, we'll just use the last of our engine juice to get a little bit further. At the same time, we're about to have this uh, Niobium volcano erupt again. Yeah, we got 70 seconds or so left. And in the meantime, we have processed 14 tons of Niobium and cooled it all the way down to room temperature. Uh, yeah, that seems like a reasonable amount for this design. 14 tons per eruption. The eruptions come... Uh, you know what? It doesn't make a difference. Fairly stable design, seems to be working grand. We'll come back to it in a, in a couple of hundred cycles and see how much we've managed to process. For now, let's head back home. For the first time in a long time, we're home. Well, I don't think we count this as home anymore. How did that appear there? Oh, that's sand, because there was dirt up here and then we cooked the dirt and you know what, doesn't matter. Let's see how it's going on in here. Uh, you. Let's make it a grounded rocket. The weird thing about making this a grounded rocket is it doesn't affect the fridge that's off here on the side. It seems this side ex area here, if you have buildings in it, they're not affected by the grounded thing. So I have to remember to turn that on and off every time we come onto the ship. Uh, we'll just set that to zero, actually. And just remember to crank it up to one kilo when we get back on. If I do this again... Fridge should actually probably go down... Actually, that might be a better idea. Put the fridge down here. Put the act, put the storage bin on top. Huh. In fact, I should probably do that while we're landed. We'll be doing some minor modifications while we're here. Main thing we want to do, though, is food. You see, we have been getting by by using sleep wheat over here. We have got this little sleep wheat farm. Uh, we're using this to provide us with sleep wheat. That's giving us the frost burgers. And the frost burgers we're feeding to everyone on the rocket. Everyone back home gets to eat barbecue and stuff like that. I would like to crank up frost burger production so that we can have a massive stockpile of it. We're going to need that stockpile for the end game uh, when everyone flies away. So I was thinking here, we'll core this area out. We'll put in some water weed seeds. We're also going to need to put in a whole bunch of uh, sleet wheat. But first, we're going to need a whole bunch of nuclear waste for the sleet wheat. About, ooh, how much sleet, how much was it? Was this? 648 tons of nuclear waste. Uh, to do the sleet wheat right. That could be a problem. I don't think we have 648 tons in storage. Uh, over here we have 80 tons. Uh, another 80 tons, about 6 tons, 4 tons, 4 tons. Oh wow, we are well short. We are going to need a lot more nuclear waste. Oh, yeah, I think we're going to build like another 3 or 4 nuclear reactors. Just chuck them full of... Yeah, we all we need them for though. We don't even want them for power. We just want them for the nuclear waste they generate. We should probably take somewhere over here far away from where anyone's going to be, build a bunch of nuclear reactors, and then, yeah, use those to generate the nuclear waste that we're going to need to produce the sleet wheat. Hmm, let's get that started over here. 
I think actually down here we would like some background for what we're about to start. We are not trying to do anything too smart here. We just want to produce as much nuclear waste as possible to achieve our goals. Uh, that doesn't mean we need to produce power using it. We just need, means we need, need the new ah. It just means we need the nuclear reactors running, which should be fairly handy. Yeah, I'll put in some stairs there just for a bit of access. I don't think we need them, but I'd like to make sure we have all the stairs necessary. And then we're probably going to want to wall off this section of the map. I don't think we're going to want duplicates going anywhere near this. Just no, not even a little bit. I think we're going to wall it off back here as well, just to make sure that no one goes anywhere close to this rad zone. Right now, the only way in and out of the reactor area is through that door. I think we're going to cut off access to that shortly. But first, we got to put in a few bits and bobs to make this work. Uh, down here is where all the nuclear waste is going to collect. We're going to have... Oh, damn it. I forgot that. That would have been awkward. What's going to happen is these are going to activate. They're going to dump their steam and the nuclear waste down here. We just want to collect the nuclear waste, which should give us... Oh, that'll give us 437 tons. Actually, how much? We can really squeeze it a little. 456 tons. You know what? Let's make it 456 tons of nuclear waste. We need 648 to do what we're planning on doing. Uh, our nuclear reactor in here has about another 160 tons, so that should that should just about tide us over. Uh, yeah, so we're just basically quadrupling our radioactive waste production. Or well, it's going to be five times more than normal. Yeah, we have one react. We had one reactor. Now we'll have five. We just got to pump water into it. Um. So where's that water going to come from is the question. Probably this stuff down here. This pool over here is actually starting to overfill as well, but this stuff is better set up. We've got two desalinators down there. I'm not actually sure how much water the nuclear reactors m use. Maybe we need a third desalinator. So checking on my numbers, I think I'm way off on the amount of nuclear waste I'm going to need. But you know what? I don't care. I've started this project. I'm going to finish it because it's a casual playthrough and we're not going to stop for stupidity. Uh, we're going to continue with the stupidity. Uh, you, uh, continue on, continue on. We can snip that off. We don't need to actually cool this stuff before we stick it into a nuclear reactor. That would be kind of pointless. Oh, damn it. I have discontinued a bunch of stuff here. I'm going to have to get that water from down there all the way to over there. But we've got a pipe we can run it through somewhere. Right. All we've done is we've hooked this up, piped it through there, and then it goes up some old piping. I, I think... That was water that used to go up to our rocket when we originally built it, or probably petroleum before that, or... This piping has uh, had multiple purposes over its lifespan. That's going to provide water to the four reactors. To fuel them with uranium, we don't want to get anywhere close to it, of course. So what we've done is we've got conveyor rails going to receptacles over there, and then we have a conveyor loader right there. Then all we have to do is wall that in there. Actually... Nope, let's make that a door so that we have a little bit more control. We'll put a door right there. We're not using electrical doors because that requires to have a conductive wire and we're not that organized. We have water set up. We have conveyor rail set up. All we need is some enriched uranium. And these guys have been busy bees. There is 2.3 tons. Uh, you should have 2.3, 2.3, 2.3. The thing about these, uh, these beta hives, it doesn't really matter where you put the uranium or if the bees all cluster around one or the other. Over a long enough period of time, it all averages out because these things have a certain hunger meter. They don't process indefinitely. They can only process a certain amount. And once they're fully saturated, they're all just going to end up around the same amount. So example, 2300 here, 2300 here. They're all pretty much much of a muchness. So let's uh, let people in. These things are set to auto harvest. Uh, currently for uranium, we have zero kilos of enriched uranium. Now we should have... A lot more. Uh, come on, scoop it out. Ice cream scoops everywhere, and someone's eventually going to get around to... Oh, actually, no, they won't plug it in there just yet. That thing's powered off. In uranium wise 8.4 tons. I, I think it's going to catch up some more. There's got to be at least a few more tons in there, right? 20 tons! There we go. That's much more like it. All right. Plug this in. 20 tons of enriched uranium, and if you would put be so kind as to put about a ton in there, I would be very happy. Uh, that should give us about 10 tons of, well, I think it's a hundredfold multiplier, actually. So one ton, once it's processed through all the nuclear reactors, should give us about 100 tons of nuclear waste. Though I could be wrong. Let's just ch chuck in the uranium and be done with it. Anyone want to... Oh, allow manual use. I'm a Muppet. And I just realized that our shuttle... Has allow manual use on this, does it not? Yep, yep. No more enriched uranium for you. 
you've got enough. You've got like at least 1,800 cycles worth left. You want to get some in there? Yeah, that's perfect. Right, that'll go in here and go into those conveyor receptacles. 10 kilos will keep them going for a day. A thousand kilos would keep one going for a hundred days. We're splitting it between four, so say 25 days apiece. No problems. Come on. Oh yeah, I haven't flipped the switch yet. Okay, you know what? We'll let them fully stock. We'll let them fully stock first, then we'll flip the switch. And done. Okay, you're full. What about everything else? Excellent. Temperature-wise, looking at about 400 degrees. That's to be expected. These are Niob it's niobium equipment in here, so we shouldn't have to worry about it. Let's see what the radiation's like. Yep. About what you'd expect. <laughs> okay, that's going to be a good way at least to farm nuclear waste. Okay, then. Um, nuclear waste has started dropping. That is... Uh, how? How did you all explode at the same time? Not enough water. Well, on the bright side, it'll generate a whole bunch more nuclear waste. Um. Oops. What? That's quite a big mess you've made. Right, so, the amount of water we had was not enough. Okay, that, I had no idea just how thirsty these things were. Like, that's a full pipe of water. Can only keep two reactors going. That is... slightly distressing. Fine, well, that's definitely going to eat into our, uh, our, rate, our nuclear waste rate production, but that's okay. We kind of had messed it up already. Uh, duplicates are going to go around and repair some of this stuff. We don't need to get any closer. I think that is good enough. Oh, God. We may have contaminated a bit of the map, just a tiny, weensy little bit. It'll be fine. It'll be, be fine and it's fine, fine. Now let's go down and start making ourselves a farm over here. That That's what we really came to do anyway. The reason it's so slow coring this place out, it's, uh, it's a little bit hot. 900 degree obsidian and igneous rock. We've set up a special drop-off down here to dump it all inside our steam room so that that heat doesn't cook our storage. Yeah, that can cause problems with all sorts of things, especially if you get it in with sulfur or phosphorite or anything like that. It can cause all that stuff to start melting. Best off, don't put it in there for 100 cycles. We'll come back later and see how it's doing. Which reminds me, how's Fireino doing? Uh, let's see what's been going on with our niobium storage. 36, 37 tons almost of this stuff. Oh, and we've got another batch of this stuff in already. Yeah, never mind. Okay, so far stable. It's ceramic tile is only at 50 degrees. I think it's going to be a while before it hits the 1800 and starts melting. We may be safe for a while longer, I'm thinking. Unfortunately, our perfect extraction failed just a tiny bit when someone dropped some boiling hot rock on top of the naphtha, which then turned to sour gas, and now this... Well, at least it was on the inside sour gas, I suppose. We'll just pump that out real quick with some thermium gas pumps. What we've started doing is we are getting the niobium, combining it with tungsten to make ourselves thermium, massive overheat potential and that stuff. So it goes all the way up to, what is it, 900 degrees? A plus 900 degree overheat temperature. So these gas pumps overheat at 975 degrees, which is great. And why are you not... Someone want to complete that last power wire so we can start pumping the sour gas out of here. One thing I'm taking care of while that's draining out is I'm ripping out our little liquid lock here. We, we never actually filled it with liquid, and it was never necessary. It's just, we pressurized the whole map with oxygen, so... Yep, turns out, pointless. Eh, we might want to put in the door back there, though, as well. I think we had some setups so that certain duplicates couldn't get in and out. Oh, I completely forgot about Marie. That was the duplicate we got out of the container, wasn't it? Oh, yeah, they're the one who's the ancient knowledge one. Right, who's got no good traits. The Irritable Bell, Mouth Breeder, Loud Sleeper, Ugly Crier, and Sparkle Streaker. So, pretty much useless across the board. 2,900 cycles old, though, so, you know, that that's good. What are your skills up to there? Let's have a quick look. 20. You've only got 20 skill points in total? Kind of expect you to have more, considering the amount of time we left you on that wheel, but, uh, yeah, we should probably get you outside and helping out. Oops. Sorry about that. So over here, we're going to put in our hydroponic farm tiles, and we're 
going to use these to create some natural tiles to grow ourselves a bunch of waterweed. We want to do all the waterweed naturally because... Actually, let me show you the math. Oh, wait, no. Uh, this is taking too long to get all the sour gas out of here, so we're going to stick in a whole bunch of mini gas pumps. Now, we didn't put these in earlier because there was still enough gas pressure in here. It would have exchanged temperature with these things. And right now, our thermium gas pumps are at almost 500 degrees. Some of them are at 400 and something. So, but now that the gas pressure is low enough, it won't really transfer any heat to the ga mini gas pumps and they won't melt because they're made of plastic and they'd overheat at 75C. Though once the new patch drops, we get this new super plastic that, well, there's special requirements to get it, but once you get it, the plastic has an overheat temperature about the same as thermium, which means you could make like really heat resistant mini gas pumps and mini liquid pumps. I'm really looking forward to that. This here is the Oni food calculator and I've decided to select frost burgers, put in about 40 duplicates and make it wild harvesting because we're going to be using some pit planting. And it tells me we're going to need about 84 uh, sleep. We, I wouldn't worry about that though. We've got plans to make that an awful lot smaller. And we're going to need about 30 water weed. I, I think we'll put about 36 water weed. Uh, 918, yeah, 36. 36 water weed should more than happily cover us and we should be able to rake in an awful lot of frost burgers. We're going to need them long term. I want to make sure everyone's stockpiled up to the gills. For our next trick, we're going to try something dumb. Uh, what we're going to do is this. We're going to make some glass, have the glass come over here, get split up into packets of 0 0.7 kilos. Then we're going to have it go across here and split up between these three rows which will then split it up into three other rows, which will split it up into each of these little uh, hydroponic farm tiles down here. Now, because we end up with a little bit of liquid glass in here, it'll turn solid and we'll end up being able to deconstruct the hydroponic farm tiles to make natural tiles made out of glass that we can wild plant in with pips. However, what we're going to try and do is do 9, 18, 27, 36. We're going to try and do 96 natural tiles simultaneously using a glass forge. Now, I heard about this from the comments and I've used it once before already. I don't know who the originator of this, so I have to give credit to whoever it is. If anyone knows, let me know and I'll, uh, I'll pin it as a top comment. And I'll stick it in the description as well. All right, here we go. Come on, give us some glass. Seriously, I have... What's your skill with machining? That shouldn't... It, it shouldn't be possible to do that bad. Eight? Oh, wow, you never got... You never went through the training courses, did you? All right, let's see. Here we go. All right, so 10 kgs, 10 kgs, and finally the 5 kgs. Hit this thing, which li flow limits it. There we go. Now, because it's flow limited, it can't break in the pipe. So we actually didn't need ceramic. Now, think about it. I could have just used normal pipe lengths from beyond this point. But we've already gone past that point, so let's not worry about it. Okay, so... Yeah, see, that one went that way. This one has to go the other direction, and then this should repeat. Um. Oh, yeah, this is going to get confusing. No, no, no. Focus on what's important. Right, so this guy's going in here, so we don't need to do anything there. We can chuck that guy in there. Um, okay, then. That guy's going to go in there. That guy's going to go in there. Oh, my God, this is going to be so much snipping. What's making this interesting is every time we cut the pipes, the liquids really shrink down in visibility. We just have to unpause a bit, and there, suddenly they, they pop right back out at you. All right, give me a few minutes. I'll... Uh, this this could take some time. And why are all of those going the right direction now? God damn it. Uh, I think we've messed this up already, have we? Yeah, I think we have. Ah, uh, I may have had the liquid valve just on a little bit too slow. Like putting it on 0.7 or point zero point seven was, was way too slow. We should have just had it on 69 grams or something along those lines. Uh, so it was taking too long. So no need for all of that complicated shenaniganry with the cutting and the splicing and all that. Uh, let this be a warning to you. Don't don't plan your game plan of auction not included while you're hungover. Real bad idea. I've been making a lot of rookie mistakes since I started doing that. Okay, all done. All the glass has been now installed. So I think the first thing we'll do is we'll get rid of all of the piping. Because the moment we start, well, what we're going to do is dismantle these hydroponic farm tiles, which have got the glass in them. When we dis dismantle the hydroponic farm tile, it's going to leave behind a bunch of solid glass, which will immediately turn into a glass tile, and entomb the hydroponics farm tile, which is made of cobalt. Yeah, so it's going to entomb the cobalt. I would prefer if we didn't have ceramic behind it as well, because it'll entomb everything inside this tile when we make it. Yeah, so let's just get rid of all of the stuff that's in here first so we can save as much as possible. And now the moment of truth. Let's deconstruct all the tiles. We've done this right. It should leave us with a bunch of glass tiles. Very small in size. That one's 900 grams, 350 grams, 400 grams, 500 grams. And, yes, you can literally see them just sort of like, pop, pop, and then it magically appear. 
Let's slow that down a little bit. Come on. Yep. Boop, boop. <laughs> Unfortunately, there's buried objects in all of them. That buried objects is the, um, yeah, you can see it is the cobalt that it took to make the tiles. So if, as long as you're okay with losing all the materials that go into the, um, ah, the hydroponic tiles, which is, it's 200 kilos, no, 100 kilos of cobalt ore, or copper ore, or whatever ore. I would use our copper ore, but unfortunately I overfed the hatches. We had a hatch ranch down here for making, uh, for smooth hatches, uh, and they sort of ate all our copper. So we now have 900 and, or 694 tons of copper, refined copper, from all of those hatches. Yeah, that might have been a few too many. All right, let's uh, let's finish this off by putting in some. Actually, let's make it granite. We might as well make the place nice while we're here. Excellent, a room ready to be wild planted with all the water weed we could need. However, I would like to put the uh, the sleep wheat one on top of it. So maybe let's get that done before we start getting into the planting section. Maybe I can make a bit of room between them so we can plant both of them at the same time. But if I can't, I'd like to load that now before I start planting. All right, we're gonna have to move that liquid lock as well, aren't we? Before we get into the stupidity that is this design, because honestly, I'm not sure how smart an idea this is. It might be a more efficient way of doing things, it might not, but it, it's just the prep work's gonna kill us. Uh, down here, we've got pips trying to plant water weed seeds. However, they won't, because they're in a vacuum. Pips in a vacuum won't wild plant. N I don't know why, what exactly is the trigger, but if they're in a vacuum, nothing. They've been in here for a while. So right now we are going to reroute our waste carbon dioxide. We've got waste carbon dioxide that comes from down here in our steam room, and we're just going to pipe that into this room. And that should solve the problem. Also, we want to pressurize this up to about well, three or four kilos, just to make sure, you know, no nasty things happen in there, like something off gases. Keeping it all carbon dioxide also helps, uh, well, when we start harvesting the crops. It'll, it'll help keep them fresh a little bit longer if something does go wrong. Anyway, let me get this finished before I explain what this stupid thing is meant to do. We are just about ready to get started here. What we have is nuclear waste being pumped from our failed experiment over here. This nuclear waste goes all the way across, gets down to these insulated pipes we've used for so many random things, and then it goes over here, where we have an awful lot of liquid meter valves, which we're going to set to 500 kilos, and then copy to all of them. So they should all be 500 kilos, and now let's hook them up. Now. All of them, the nuclear waste is going to spread out between them, but all of them should slowly start dumping nuclear waste down here, because there is, yeah, two of them set up. So you've got 500 kgs, you've got 170, yeah, okay, so once that one stops up, it'll switch to the next one, and so on and so forth. And what is going on? Yeah, I think it's working. Liquid. Some of them are solidifying, but then immediately turning back. You know what? It's fine. It's fine. So long as it's making it down in the end, and we're going to end up with enough nuclear waste. This will give us 1,000 kilos of nuclear waste in each one of those tiles. We'll come back and deal with the, uh, the rest of it later. For now, we want to do some maintenance in here. You see, we have a bunch of shovels and stuff over here. Picky, eater, hunger. Yeah, yeah, who cares? But what we're going to do is we're going to move in some more friends. You see, we've got four shovel legs over here. And those things need to be moved inside the rocket, where they can be put to good use. I wish we could rename the rocket, but whatever. Uh, so we'll start dumping all of these in here. Done. All eggs have been moved in. I don't think we've got anything left out here. Nope. No shovel eggs, no nothing. It just gives us that little bit more food on the move. Uh, we can wall this place back in again. And then once we're done there, we want to do a little bit of rewriting of the gas. You see, this is where the waste output goes. And if the uh, pump's down from down here... If there's any carbon dioxide in the shuttle, it goes up to here, and if there's oxygen, it gets filtered out. Otherwise, anything else that's not oxygen gets sent down here and out this gas port. However, when we're landing on planets, that can cause issues. So what was recommended was, why don't we just, you know, jump it into the background of space inside the shuttle, which is a very smart plan. So that's exactly what we're going to do. All we got to do is run some gas pipes over here, run them over to this section, and I figure, actually, I say we put the right here. Put the gas I'd put right there, and since this place is already in a vacuum, we can get in here no problems. Uh, yeah, we can take out those two tiles, put in a gas vent there, and then put the tile back. That way all the gas will come out right here and be vented at the base of the monument. 
saving us the hassle of, say, if we land on a water planet again, we don't have to worry about carbon dioxide building up on the rocket while I try and remember to build an output port for it somewhere. Anyone want to do that? Perfect. Ventilation. We, need, we don't need a high-pressure gas vent, but we're going to go with one anyway, and why not just make it out of copper? Finished. Emergency gas port installed. I think it's time we turned back on the reactor. And we hooked back up all of these. Yep, you can go in there, you can go in there, and we'll hit the on switch. Now, I'm really glad that we put in some automation here earlier, because we do have this automation that goes to that stops this from overpressurizing. The only reason this overpressurizes is because, well, we're putting toilet water in there. But it's the only way to clean our toilet water. I mean, we could feed it into timber. You know what? No, it's fine. It's fine the way it is, which reminds me I should replace those timber reeds I accidentally destroyed. Yeah, that triage cot can go. It's not like our dupes get hurt that often. We can, we can put in a triage cot somewhere else. All right, you guys are all good. Uh, we will turn this sucker on. Uh, uranium is delivered. Reactor kicks in. Perfect. Water starts moving again. There's a little bit of damaged ceramic there, but I was going to have to delete the reactor to repair it, and I'm like, nope. Nope, 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 nope. And I think we are all good. Once that reactor is, once that last steam turbine goes in, we will be good to go. Then, that leads us back to here. How are we looking? Ugh, still going. All right, I'll fast forward this until we've got a thousand kilos in each one of these. That's 1,000 kilos per tile, a little bit more in some. Some of them got a few grams extra here and there, but that's okay. Now, we want to put 18 kilos, 1,800 kilos in each one of those. So, we're going to change you to 400. We're going to reset the amount, and we're going to copy that to all of them. Uh, do we have to manually go around and reset the lot? Oh my god, we totally do have to reset. Uh, fine, fine, I'll reset the lot. This is actually going to be slightly more annoying than I thought it was going to be. And yeah, while that is going on, we're going to go back to the uh, the failed experiment over here, and I'm going to try something different. I mean, we don't really need the nuclear waste. We're using the nuclear waste currently from our rocket, but I hate to leave an experiment failed. So we've hooked it up again with some water, but this time we're going to make some changes. Uh, full disclosure, I haven't really tested this. I'm just sort of winging this on a rough idea. We have set up a timer here that activates between active and inactive every 10 seconds. So what will happen is, and there's also not gate, a NOT gate built in here. So this timer is going to go, hey, I'm red. Switch will go through this NOT gate and turn this auto sweeper on for 10 seconds. Then after 10 seconds, it flips back and this one comes on and that one goes off for 10 seconds. And then they just keep flipping back and forth. Flip, flop, flip, flop, dun, 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 dun. Right, so here's what we're going to do. We are going to drip feed one kilo of uranium to these reactors at a time. It will get spread out equally amongst all of them. And then hopefully they will slowly fill up one kilo of uranium, which means, well, the less uranium they have in them, the less heat they produce, which means the less water they're going to need, in theory. If not, they'll explode again. Honestly, I'm okay with either result. That will be, uh, I just want to give it a shot. Right, you, you are set to one. You are going to be set to two and one kilo. And you are going to be set to three. So the way this works is this can move one kilo over here because this bin can only hold one kilo. And then when it's off, this one will turn on, pull that one kilo, dump it onto the conveyor loader. And then it'll keep switching back and forth. And that means every 20 seconds, we should end up with one kilo on the line, which means at the end of 600 seconds, we should end up with 30 kilos. 600 seconds is a day. These things should burn 30 kilos a day. So in theory, this should work. In reality, I have no idea. And you are one kilo of enriched uranium. Okay, let's see if this incredibly simplistic system works. I am curious. Right, here we go. Oh, and to make sure that they all go into the right reactor, as in this one here can only put the uranium in. What are you doing? Oh, enable. Come on, turn them on. Perfect. That guy fills up that reactor. Now, this guy in the middle could, in theory, put it in the right-hand reactor. However, that's... Priority level one, which means they should have to put it in the second reactor. This guy, same thing. He will have to put it into the third reactor because this reactor here has priority level three. And they all can only access one of these uh, things. So in theory, each one should only get one kilo and that's it. And they should never get more than one kilo. And then they produced absolutely piddling amounts of heat. But they should still produce the exact same amount of nuclear waste. Since they're producing piddling amounts of heat, it doesn't actually require that much water to keep them going. Because it doesn't require that much water to keep them going, they shouldn't be exploding water everywhere. They're exploding because of lack of water. 
Um, right, we're probably going to want to leave this for like 50 or 60 cycles. <laughs> but in theory, we should be able to generate a bunch of... Oh, wow. Yep, that's pretty toasty. Hey! And I dumped a bunch of frozen nuclear waste down there to help uh, speed things along. There was about eight tons of uh, frozen nuclear waste that these guys dropped between their life cycle. Every time one of these drops, they leave behind a kilo of nuclear waste. Uh, but it's solid because they're, of course, frozen. So I dumped it all there and it seems to have eventually melted. Let's see what the temperature is looking like around here. No, it's still incredibly toasty, but it's down from 300 degrees. So, I mean, that's a an improvement, I suppose. And water-wise, how are we looking? The system's actually keeping up. You see, what we learned when we were playing Reddit is trying to make uh, limited or mini nuclear, nuclear reactors is if there's only a certain amount of uranium in them, the heat they generate seems to be relative to the amount of uranium in the system. So normally these things hold 60 kilos of uranium. In fact, let's go into, say, this guy here. And you'll see there is 59.9 kilos of enriched uranium right there and 71 kilos in reserve. Now, as that burns down, the 59.8, it'll keep going down 0.7. At some point, it will take uranium, enriched uranium from here and combine it into the active uranium. There we go, we're back up to 60 kilos. That 60 kilos is heated up to like 400 plus degrees as it's being burned off, and then the water takes the heat from it. Remember, the amount of heat generated by 60 kilos of mass is a lot. The amount of heat generated by one kilo of mass is not a lot. So it generates very little heat. You see here, it's taking forever for the water to go up in temperature. So because the water takes so long to go up in temperature, it's drastically slowed down the amount of water required. But the nuclear waste, it seems, still produced at the exact same speed. Problem solved. Now we can produce absolutely butt tons of nuclear waste. And I forgot to wall up the sides of this again. So we end up with steam breaking too. You know what? That's easy to fix. That is very easy to fix. What we can do is just turn this off. You're at zero, buddy. You you are all cut off, which means they'll all run out in, I'll take some 10 kilos, like a tenth of a cycle, and then we can go in there and do fixes. That worked out amazingly well. Anyway, where were we? Ah, yes, how are you guys going? You almost finished? Not quite. Not quite. Almost there. We have now got 1,800 kilos of nuclear waste in all of these. Yeah, 1,800, 1,800. Well, there's 1,000 in the bottom layer and then 800 on top. Maybe a kilo or two got squeezed in on top of that. Then what we're going to do is we are going to put airflow tiles on top and then we're going to wall these suckers in. We're going to compress them down. Come on. A little bit more. Uh, missed one. All right, perfect. We'll compress those down and then we'll start on the next layer. Uh, try to imagine this liquid as it's going to end up a solid. Once we cool it down, it'll form a solid tile of nuclear waste. The problem is, well, if it's under 1500 kilos, it won't form a tile, it'll still form debris. So you have to compress it down before you have any chance of making it into a solid tile. As well as that, when you compress it down, this makes it give it, you know, that little bit more of a radioactive glow that we like. We're going to want that. So yeah, that worked out quite nicely. Now we can do a little bit of trimming here because that stuff is nice and safely contained and we can start on the next row. All right, let's dump in a uh, ton of nuclear waste into our next layer. We got to do four layers. We're going to make something like this, but instead of natural tiles with glass, we're going to make natural tiles with nuclear waste because of course we are. Okay, while building this, I realized I've messed up again. This has been... Oh my god, what a hangover day. Okay, okay. The problem made was I didn't make these four tiles away. These are supposed to be four tiles high, otherwise the pips can't plant, I just realized. Those pips are not planting that seed there because this needs to be down one tile, which means that needs to be down one tile, which means that can't be placed down one tile because it's right above a steam turbine. Which means this needs to go up one, this needs to go up two, uh, that needs to go up three. So that's uh, three, four, six tiles. Uh, yeah, that's... It's going to be a problem. So, uh, time to do some squishing somehow. So, we're gonna diagonally drop them a couple of tiles, which should hopefully save us. Means we'll have to break back in across the top and compress them down a couple of tiles, and we're also going to... Oh, actually, you can go as well. Uh, where is the... That gets deleted. Oh, it does actually get pushed out. I was worried that the steel was going to get left in there. 
Never mind. Well, let's go down one more layer. We can drop these two, drop that one. Uh, that one will have to stay where it is, and we'll have to move the top layer up one more notch. But we should be able to recover this. Oh, just a litany of mess-ups today. We are just about finished. Well, when I say finished, just about finished on this part of the plan. Oh, now all we gotta do is cool this nuclear waste down to about, like, minus something degrees. So, minus... It's, it's at 236, so we just gotta remove 236 degrees of temperature from this. Should be fairly easy peasy. Here comes the super coolant now. Fortunately, the super coolant has nothing to interact with just yet, but that super coolant is going to go up and around. Uh, we've also put in a high pressure gas vent, and that's going to feed back to these boilers. And they're going to, you know what, uh, I might want to just get a little bit going already, just so we can get started. It might be a while before that thing switches on, and I would like to make sure we are ready to go. You see, this whole thing is kept in a vacuum, so no real temperature exchange is going on anywhere. We've got those boiling hot pieces of nuclear waste, then we've got these temperature shift plates in there. Uh, unfortunately, there's nothing to exchange heat with, so the super coolant going around in those pipes is doing nothing. Absolutely not. It's not actually exchanging any temperature or anything, until we get some gas pressure in here. Uh, we're looking at the gases. There we go. Carbon dioxide. A little bit to start, a little bit more to continue. I've got a full pipe of that stuff coming up from down here. That's all we need for now. Let's get the pressure in here to about a kilo and then we can at least get started. How is this super coolant looking now? All right. Came in, coming in at minus 16, leaving at about one degree. You know what? I think that's enough. We can turn off this. We don't need this anymore. We'll let that do its own thing whenever it wants and we'll reconnect that. Back. You know what, we'll take all of that gas as well. Why not? Just this only has a, a single output up here, so I'm uh, trying to get as much in for as little wastage. Right. That stuff should slowly start to come down in temperature as the supercoolant goes through here. Oh, I should probably point out, this supercoolant comes through here, rotates all the way around, exchanges heat with the gases and the temperature shift plates, which exchanges heat with the nuclear waste quite thoroughly. Well, there's also those uh, airflow tiles, which helps. Then the super coolant goes all the way out, back down to our room here, and goes through three aqua tuners. Those three aqua tuners reduce the temperature of it by, well, a lot. Uh, it also increases the temperature of our steam room by a fair chunk as well. That is, it, it, it's three aqua tuners pumping super coolant. That is, um, I'm glad we got five steam turbines. It's also taking care of all the petroleum generators and stuff, but it's fine. It's fine. Let's actually just have a quick check of the temperature. You're coming in at minus 100... Well, actually, wait, you're coming in at 120 degrees? Wow. Going out at 80. Well, so... Yeah, the super coolant is, is working, but that uh, that nuclear waste has a lot of heat in it. This, this could take some time. I also managed to leave a bunch of steel in here and didn't sweep them up in time before I sealed them in. That's okay, we can put in some auto sweepers that can reach diagonally. Then all we have to do, manufactured material, give us some steel, put that on a one, and done. We've managed to rescue all the steel out of there. This is going to take a while, like a long, long while. However, a couple of things. The nuclear waste that we were pumping around here, we're now going to dump the excess over here. We were, we had been pumping some from a rocket, but only a small bit. It turns out this, uh, this nuclear waste reactor design works quite well. It produces very little steam, takes very little water to run, which produces oodles and oodles and oodles of nuclear waste. We managed to fill up all of our nuclear waste needs down here for our, uh, our sleet wheat. You see, the plan is we want to grow sleet wheat in this. I, I don't think I'm going to be able to do it this episode, though, because this is probably going to take a while to cool down. I kind of forgotten how much heat mass there is in nuclear waste. It's not quite as much as supercoolant. For example, it's 7.44 is the heat capacity. Heat capacity of supercoolant is 8.44. Yeah, it's going to take a long time. Long, long time. Uh, we're going to get rid of that bridge. We pulled in the super coolant from over there to fill that up. Oh, but I will say the uh, the nuclear reactor design has, has definitely made me happy. That is, that's just glorious. Look at that. That is one way to generate rads and it's not a horrible monster to manage. I mean, who would have thought making steam turbo uh, nuclear reactors that use less steam? Hmm. 
Oh, and there is ways to like uh, put in less water. I wonder if you could put in this much uranium and less water. Actually, no, no, no. I'm thinking of things too weirdly. No point. Uh, what we need to do here is drain out the lines so that the lines down in the crop room don't get blocked up. You see, if we had left those uh, that sitting in the lines, eventually when it gets cold enough here, that stuff would break. I am a day late and a dollar short on this episode, it seems. I just cannot get this finished in this in just one episode. We're already gone well past the 40 minute mark. Uh, uh, yeah, okay, the plan. Well, I. I the explanation for why we're doing something this stupid. What we want to do is plant sleet wheat in this nuclear waste. Freeze this whole place down, plant sleet wheat. However, we don't want to plant normal sleet wheat. We want to plant mutated sleet wheat. Problem with mutated sleet wheat is it requires 250 rads to live. And while we could build a nuclear reactor and all that, I want it to be like, it's passive, wild planted stuff. So if you'll notice, this stuff is producing 290 rads, 300. Actually, this stuff here is probably a better estimate. 312, let's go to an edge one. 268 rads. So if you put in about 1,800 kilos of nuclear waste, you compress them down, freeze them, whatever, then you can wild plant mutated plants in them, and the mutated plants will have enough rads to grow. And you've also got, like, a, a, a natural time to plant them in. So, you know, it's a win-win scenario. Problem is, of course, arranging it all, compressing it down, freezing them and all that stuff, it's uh, not exactly too easy. However, it gives us some huge advantages. For example, normal sleet wheat takes 18 cycles to grow. If it's domesticated. If it's not domesticated, I think it's 72... Yeah, it's 72 cycles to grow wild sleet wheat, which is a long time. However, let's just say you had exuberant, mutated exuberant sleet wheat. That grows four times faster, which means it grows in 4.5 cycles if you plant it. But if you wild plant it, it takes 18 cycles, which is the exact same length as if you just planted normal sleet wheat in a farm tile. So by wild planting exuberant sleet wheat, We'll get the same productivity as normal planted sleet wheat, but as the wild variant. Oh, I'm explaining that terribly badly, but I, I think it's sort of semi-clear. We plant the we wild plant the exuberant stuff, and it'll be just as productive as our current sleet wheat over here. This stuff here will be just as productive as wild planted e exuberant sleet wheat. Downside, we only have 18 of them, so that's not exactly a lot. I would prefer if we had, you know... 36 or something like that so we could fill this entire area. So I suppose the question is what's the other stuff we can put in here? We could do Bountiful, which doubles the yield amount, but yeah, that's 400% harvest duration. How about Super Specialized? That will decrease the temperatures. We'd have to keep the temperature below minus 19 degrees, but it would also double the yield. Yeah, that might actually be worthwhile. Or maybe there's some other tricks, or, tricks of the trade we could try and pull. But for now, I'm going to cut this out. Uh, this thing is a great way to produce nuclear waste. Absolutely terrible at producing power. Uh, oh, oops. Wait a minute, wait a minute. I know, to stop them all overheating, we have conduction panel, conduction panel, and conduction panel. So all the water going to the reactor, well, why is that? People, stop feeding that. Yeah, so the water going to the reactor will actually pass through those areas, wick the heat away from them, making sure they never overheat. And how? How are you dropping off uranium at that thing when the door is locked? No one is allowed in or out. No one. And in fact, you know what? No, one, no one's even allowed into those rooms either. I don't want any of you going into the B room. Right, we'll just make sure that's an outdoor only. And... Done. Nope, don't even think about it. Yeah, perfect. And this little beauty is producing a, just a little ocean of nuclear waste for us. I don't know what I'm going to use that nuclear waste for now, but uh, I just wanted to make sure that it worked. Anyway, I'm going to cut this out here. I uh, hope you enjoyed and good luck.